Welcome everyone. Limitless Potential Technologies has been busy, although we have not posted a video for quite some time. We're gonna fix that moving forward. I just wanted to get the current pulse motor project that I've been working on to a certain threshold so then we can continually put out video content and bring you guys along for the ride, which it is definitely gonna be a ride. The whole purpose of me, my life, this channel, is to release free energy to the people and to do that without greed or fear, open source everything. I think a lot of the free energy devices that are out there on social media are fake, and a lot of the free energy devices that are real, which aren't on social media, <clears throat> fail because of fear and greed or a combination of those two things. There's no patenting involved in this. We're not making a business around it. We're simply open sourcing all of the information, all of the files, all of the CAD drawings, all of the steps. We're showing you how to do it, and in the long run, I want to print this and put it onto non-social media as well, just in case they shut down you know, YouTube or whatever once we start getting this thing up and running. We wanna move forward and distribute this information to the people so it can be replicated and built as simply and efficiently as possible. So, that being said, I wanna share with you guys where I'm at with the current pulse motor. So, this pulse motor is based off of the Bendini technology, so the simple school girl motor the transistor version. We're taking this and we're stepping it up. We're increasing the voltages and the frequency at which it spins in order to get as big of impulse function spikes of energy as possible and then as quickly as possible capture that energy back because when you capture it back quickly, you get more energy than what you put in as long as your impulse function is sharp enough and have high enough voltage and frequencies. And I guess I wanna start with showing you guys. So basically, we've taken this Bendini motor over here and we based everything around, our starting point is the bearings and the magnets, right? So we have to prototype around the bearings and the magnets. You need to have this thing completely fine tuned. It has to be precisely engineered so there's no vibration in it. Once we do get it up and running, we wanna be able to spool this thing up to, you know, five, six, 7,000 RPM. I don't know if we get up to 10,000, but we need to go up as fast as possible. We can't have any vibrations. We also cannot have the magnets flying off the rotor. They can't be taped on the outside like the schoolgirl motor. So everything is based around the bearings. We need very low resistance bearings. I have NSK bearings here. These ones are 6906, so basically they're a 30 millimeter inner diameter and a 47 millimeter outer diameter. I'm probably gonna go to a slightly different bearing with a hybrid ceramic. It seems like it'll be a little bit less friction. Not that these are bad, I just wanna you know, negate as much friction as possible. Obviously, it's a free energy device. We don't wanna waste any energy with losses if we don't have to. And then the magnets. So I went back and forth whether I wanted to build this rotor three inches wide or two inches wide. I settled on a three inch wide or a three inch long magnet, one inch wide, half inch in thickness, polarized through the thickness. So we're gonna put all the north faces on the outside, south poles inside. You can see I've got 16 magnetic slots here built into this rotor, and these slots have a taper to them. You can see the taper there. This is to allow the magnet to slide in, and then obviously we're gonna to have to get it in, po in position and then epoxy it, but basically they're gonna sit flush to the outside, but they won't be able to fly out when this thing is spinning at super high RPMs. We did taper slots, so the magnets will fit flush. They're gonna look amazing. It'll all be epoxied in there, so they cannot move. Doesn't matter how fast we spin this thing, the magnets aren't gonna fly out. The material I chose for the rotor itself is a plastic composite material called PEI. I went through a lot of different plastic materials, acetohomopolymer, aceto, I think it was monopolymer. This PEI is basically as high of quality as I could afford. There's only a couple others that are higher quality. I'll go into depth about those material choices in another video, but this one is very mechanically sound and easy to machine. You can see this one was CNC machined. This cost me $2,500 Canadian, so you know, it was like $1,700 US, $1,600 US for this rotor and we measured several times before getting it made because of the price and uh, lead times. So I'm happy with these magnets and how they're gonna look. Basically, these magnets I've gotten from Jobmaster Magnets in Canada. They're water jetted. I think I'm gonna break down actually and pay for custom magnets to be made just so they're all exactly precise and the tolerance is, you know, 
bang on. Like I said, I don't want to get to the final stage of this and have any vibrations. So it's going to cost me another thousand dollars to get magnets custom made. It's actually harder to find three by one inch by half inch magnets than you would think. But I think we're going to have to go the custom route. So that's going to be another eight weeks of lead time before I get those magnets most likely. We'll see how I feel about the water jet ones here once we start getting them. Some of them look really nice. Like this one here just fits beautifully. It's just others are not quite the same thickness so they fit slightly different so you can see this one here would have more of a it's like two millimeters from the top edge this one here is basically bang on i want them all to be like this just beautifully inset perfectly into the rotor so that's the rotor the stator is going to be a ceramic box built of three quarter inch clear acrylic material i'm picking that up next week that cost another fifteen hundred dollars and on the back of the enclosure we have slots these slots allow our coils to move in and out so the face of the coil can be adjusted from the face of the magnet you can see these coils that i've made are an oval shape right so they're gonna i made them longer just to match the length of the magnets so basically the magnets are going to pass by the face of this coil this is going to be wound with the 20 gauge wire which i'll show you in a second and we can adjust the distance between the two. These coil cores are 3D printed. This particular one was a composite material with carbon fiber in it. I opted out of the carbon fiber composite material just because I don't want anything with a dye magnetic property or a chance of messing with our very high frequency magnetic pulses. And it seems like carbon fiber does have a slight dye magnetic tendency. So I opted to go with a filament that's called ASA. Anybody who's into 3D printing, you know, you're gonna be more familiar with this stuff than I am. I've got a buddy who's really into it and he's helping me print all this. But that's basically what the coil cores are gonna look like. We've got these tabs on the end, which will allow us to mount into the back of the stator housing. And like I say, they'll slide in and out. The rotor's gonna be here. Basically, I could show you on what the bendini, so the, this will be the where the coils are. Instead of having the coil like that, we're gonna have an oval coil that's mounted on the backside like that. I'm also into a new shop here. It looks a little different, it's bigger. I'm still setting it up, but this is gonna be where we release the free energy technologies from this shop. So a lot more room. I might have to get some, you know, sound dampening material in here. It probably doesn't have the best sound quality, but this is a starting point. So we're moving forward and the shaft. Got my buddy to machine a shaft, 30 mil diameter steel. I think it was 1110 or 1010. It's very high quality steel, very hard. He's also threaded each end with a 12 mil thread. So we can put on a power takeoff pulley and or we may need to add trigger rotor on the end of the shaft just to use as a signal to produce the trigger signal. So I can show you these small magnets here. These are really tiny six mil neodymium rectangular magnets. I got those for the trigger rotor. I think we'll probably have something like, you know, 150, 200 millimeter diameter rotor for the trigger rotor when we do get there. And again, I'm just trying to plan ahead. I'm leaving myself, you know, tapping holes ahead of time just in case we need things. Cause with prototyping, you don't want to get to the stage where everything's built. And then you're like, oh crap, I should have done that. It'd be really nice to have that. You can't mess with this. It's gotta be precise. We cannot have any imbalances in this. Everything has to be precision engineered for this technology to work and demonstrate its ability to produce excess energy. So I'm gonna make another video next week once I get the acrylic housing and start building that. I'm working on sourcing a few more magnets, but overall I'm really happy with how this turned out. It looks amazing. I'm happy with how it's going. It's exciting. So basically the timeline is a couple more months. We're gonna have this thing up and rotating, balanced perfectly. We'll start winding the wire onto these coils. I'll show you guys the wire I've got. I bought a big, I think it's 20 kilos or 25 kilos of wire from China. And I got that for 40% of the price, what it would have cost me to get the mag wire in North America. We're using 20 gauge mag wire, just like Bendini did on his main rotor. I'm not sure exactly how many windings we're gonna go with. We can probably start with six windings twisted together and then we can experiment. We're gonna get this thing up and running with a single coil and then try a couple different coil configurations and just see the different efficiencies and effects. So that allows us, you know, to play with that before we commit to winding all 15 of the other coils around the outside. So in total, we're gonna have 16 coils. We're gonna have two battery banks of 12 deep cycle lead acid batteries. So 120 volts. We're stepping up the voltages. We're gonna make this thing spin super fast and we're using all of the electrical components or silicon carbide. So quick instantaneous switching. And that's what Paul Babcock, Aaron Merkram, all these guys that haven't actually told us how to build these machines. 
hinted at needing to do in order to build them. So there are people with these machines working, they just haven't publicly disclosed it. That's the purpose of this technology and all of the videos that are to come down the road. So I'm looking forward to showing you guys and working with you and I think I'll leave it there for now. I love you all. Thank you for watching Limitless Potential Technologies. Like and subscribe, there's gonna be some exciting stuff coming. I do need help funding this, so I'm hoping that someone watching can help fund it. I'll set up a avenue for donating money and contributing to it. Whether you wanna contribute your time, your money, or just your views and your subscriptions, all of it is much appreciated. I love you all, thank you.